Okay, so this is an example of the type of information that the satellite sent to, to us or to users. We call this information embedded in navigation message. Okay. So at each time, uh, So at each time, they send this type of frame, data frame. So each frame consists of uh, five blocks, okay? When, when one frame is finished, you send the next frame. And each frame, you know, uh, is sent with 30 seconds. Okay, and uh, 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 actually, uh, for for the total of uh, five blocks, it takes about thirty seconds. Okay, and then when one, one frame is finished, then you send the next frame and the next frame and so on. I think total they call super frame or something like that. Yeah. So each block there are different types of information like uh, clock correction, satellite health, accuracy and then satellite co uh, position coefficients, you know, and so on. Okay. Ah, they call subframe, not blocks. So this is what is called subframe. So each frame consists of five subframes. Total takes about 30 seconds to send to us. When one frame is finished, then you send the next frame and the next frame and so on. depending on how many satellite or so, okay? Okay, so that's it. We will have like an, another lecture on satellite orbit information, very, very detailed, okay? So before I go, uh, we can talk about a little bit more about the type of data transmission by Genesis satellite, okay? In general, in communication uh, transmission, uh, for the data that are transmitted to us, we can looking at the multiple access. Multiple access means um, how do we access the frequencies, you know, available. One is called, especially when you have um, many users, okay, multiple, let's say multiple users. And all the users want to access the frequencies at, at the same time. So what are some uh, techniques used? So if you have heard of this before, there are three types. One is called time division, multiplexing, uh, multiple access, time division, multiple access, okay? So in the first case, TDMA is the time-based access so each users access the frequencies at separate time on the other hand uh, frequency division f represent frequency for frequency division multiple access we divide the whole spectrum into smaller chunks of frequencies and each user occupied is on frequency bandwidth so they all send in a different uh, frequency band, okay? And that's how they utilize the frequency. For TDMA, each user utilize the entire frequency, but uh, for the next user, you have to wait for your turn. Okay? And lastly, this is called CDMA. For CDMA is a code based access okay so what we do is uh, each user we use a different code and they are orthogonal code okay orthogonal codes so each user modulate with different codes that are orthogonal so they can trans for each users can transmit 
any time and all frequency, you know, overlapping each other. But then on the receive side, you can uh, bring out in a signal from each user or each satellite in this case, okay, uh, by selectively, by selectively extract the user information based on the orthogonal code, okay? So let's say there are 32 satellites for GNS, for GPS, then each satellite has its own orthogonal code, right? So we need 32 codes for transmission. And each satellite transmit its own code to anyone in the, where in the world. For us, for, as a mobile users or GPS receiver, then we need to know all codes in order to you know, extract signal from each, each, uh, each satellite. Okay. So for, um, for GPS or GN GPS, okay, user in this picture is the satellite. Okay. So all satellites transmit information at the same time covering the entire bandwidth of spectrum by using different code. Okay, and uh, for, uh, actually, uh, uh, this is CDMA, yeah? and uh, sometimes we hear the word called spread spectrum, okay, that always come together with CDMA. Uh, what is a spread spectrum? Spread spectrum is a technique of transmitting data bits by spreading a spectrum, okay? Or in a way by transmitting at shorter intervals. Okay. So spread spectrum means we uh, transmit at shorter period or shorter time, okay? Which results in the, a large spectrum, okay? Uh, and direct sequence means uh, well, we talk about it. What it means, okay? So we'll, we'll have some some explanation. So the technique of direct sequence spread spectrum and also CDMA, they allow many transmitters to share the same frequency band. So we can say CDMA, okay? And uh, uh, the signals cannot be received or they cannot be detected if the spreading code is not known, okay? So, so in our GPS receiver or GNS receiver, we need to know these codes in order to extract the satellite navigation message. And uh, anyway, the spread spectrum, when you spread spectrum like this, it makes it a bit relatively harder to jam or, or, or intentional interference. Then also um, the spreading code that is used are also exploited to measure the distance from the satellite to the receiver as well, okay? So uh, how does it work? So let's take a look. It's very simple actually, if you look from here. If you have the data, which is one, zero, zero, one, okay? And if this code is called a three chip code or uh, one zero one, so basically what we do is uh, for, let me change color to red, maybe it's a bit easier to see. So what we mean is that uh, for every bit one, we send one zero one instead, okay? And for bit zero, we send the code of inverse, which is uh, zero, Oh, sorry, uh, let me do this. So the way we modulate and we convert from the data bits into the code is like this. So if this is 101, okay, which is data, and this is the code, which is the 101, uh, simply speaking, we can just uh, write out the code 
which is 101101 101, 101, repetitively, okay? And just multiply or XOR together, okay? We can XOR together. When you XOR together, then what do you get? You just get a 101 and then inverse 010, 010, 101. That's all, okay? So each of this bit is the bit of the code, okay? It's the code bit. And in communication, we don't call code bit. We call it chip, okay? So that means that in this case, for each data bit becomes three chips, okay? Chip just means small part, okay? So this is an example of what it is, okay? So on the transmit side, we get uh, the transmitted signal with shorter period, okay? Because the chip is smaller. If you use a three chip code, then the chip has the period three times smaller than the data. If you use a, if you use like a, 15, 15 or 16 chip code, then each bit or each chip, you know, is the 16 times shorter than the data. And that's what we mean by spread spectrum, okay? So the for, for the code bit or the chips has the, the period, I, let's say I say TC, okay? Which is around uh, one over K, let's, uh, let's call spreading factor as k, okay? One over k of Tb, okay? Therefore, the bandwidth, if we talk about NRZ and we only look at the main lobe, okay? The bandwidth of the code is around three times the bandwidth of the data. So it's just the concept of communication that we're talking about. So this is for the transmit side. So on the receive side, what do we do? Well, if we know that uh, these are the transmitted chips, okay, we just multiply it with the code. That's all. Oh, not multiply, sorry. In this case, the, we XOR, okay? If we're talking about one and zero, then we do XOR. If we talk about amplitude of one and minus one, uh, we multiply. So that depends on how we talk about it, okay? All the same. So, so in this case, on the receive side, what do we do? We multiply, uh, we XOR the transmit, the let's say the receive signal, okay? The transmitted signal that we receive with the code Okay. If you synchronize the code well, then you won't have any problem. And when you do XOR, so you get what is supposed you to get, you know, one XOR one, you get one. Zero XOR zero, uh, then you get one. And then one one, you get one. Okay. And, uh, and uh, what else? Yeah, just you just keep doing this, okay? And this is what you get as the received data, okay? But if you re if you multiply with a code, a different code here, if you multiply with a code that is orthogonal, then when you multiply, what happens is you will get uh, for each period, you will get you know half positive and half negative. And when you sum together, you get zero. Okay. So orthogonality helps when you do this. Okay. Okay, let's talk about spreading code then. So uh, typically the bit duration is 20, 20 millisecond. Okay, so this is one bit. 
uh, we transmit the navigation message at 50 bit per second. Okay. So of each each uh, each period, uh, each bit has the length of one over fifty, which is twenty millisecond. Okay. So that's the length of each bit. And uh, for CA code, okay, the data bits, they are spread with the CA code, which is based on the gold code, okay. So for each data bit in here, we have 20 code periods. Okay, so each of these is one code periods with 1,023 1, chips. Okay, so total here, basically we have 20 multiply 1,023 chips. Okay, on the previous page, uh, we had three chip code, right? A code with three chips, meaning that one bit is expanded into three chips. But for GPS, for CA code, one bit, uh, uh, the, the code that we use is 1,023 1, chips. And we repeat it 20 times, okay? Uh, do you get it? You get this page, uh, what I mean? G, uh, Pio? Any question, just in case? We'll talk about gold code on the following page. Any question? Yes, no? Yeah. Yes? No, not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. So so that's what we do, you know, for each data bit, whatever we, we want to transmit each data bit. We uh, represent each data bit into 20 code periods, where each code period com uh, consists of 1,023 chips, okay? So one data bit has over, what, 20, about 20,000, right? 20,000 and then 460 460. chips, yes. And if you compute it right, you divide 20 milliseconds by 20,000, you get about one microsecond for each chip, okay? So that's the resolution. But then you need to be able to find the, the right start of the code well, because from the previous page, you know, we get uh, this type of information out but we need to sync the code and the transmitted signal, right? So there will be some process called code phase search as well. So this picture just uh, show just another picture that uh, uh, I think this is from uh, uh, from from slides from Japanese researchers that uh, make some training. So if you have data like this, you know, like you can look at it as positive and negative, no? Data, you can just multiply with the code, okay? So for each data bit, like a lot of codes in here, you just multiplied. As similarly here, you multiply with the code, okay? And then, uh, and then you, uh, when you get this, when after multiplication, you also have to multiply with the carrier, like the sine or cosine, you know, at the frequency you look at. Okay. So normally the frequency of this code will be smaller than the frequency of the carrier, okay? The carrier we talk about like, a, you know, one point, five gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz, right? 
Okay, but uh, for the code, the frequency is only like one microsecond. So it's like one megahertz, right? So it's very different. So the carrier is around one point something gigahertz. But for the code, the frequency is in the like some values of megahertz. Okay. So it's, the carrier is more, is faster than the code itself. But the data is very small, but the data is only 50 hertz. Okay. Uh, can, do, do you understand this, the relative frequency for each thing that we are looking at? Okay. Okay, if you multiply with the carrier like this, it's just, it, it's just BPSK signal. If you multiply the carrier with all these, you just get the modulation called BPSK modulation. And uh, what are the available service by GPS? Well, there are two types. One is called standard positioning service. This is for any uh, human being in the world. It's, you, it's called peaceful civil use. Another type is called a precise positioning service. Uh, this precise positioning service is different, different from those PPP, RTK, okay? PPP, RTK, all these, they are more like, a, how do you call it? They call assisted or differential positioning. It's different. These are more like a differential positioning. Okay. But for precise positioning service or PPS, this is normally used by military, meaning that you get good positioning but you don't have any, you don't need any extra correction or differential. You don't need base station. It's, it's different. Okay. So the users that can use this type of precise positioning service, they have, they have to be authorized by the Department of Defense. Okay. So they can be US government, military. They can be, uh, how do you call it? Like uh, the nations, the countries that are friendly to US. Okay, so, but it's not just for any human, any any citizen to use. Because the remember that GPS system was devised early on for military purpose. Later, later they release it and they open it for for the public use. But at at the beginning, it was more for military. Okay. So, what are the signal structure for the GPS? Okay. Well, first, of course, you have carrier, right? High frequency, like L1, L2, L5 frequencies. Then you have the code that you have to spread the data bits, right? And these codes, they are based on pseudo-random number or pseudo-random integer. We, we call it PRN codes, right? And because for each satellite, they use different pseudo-random numbers, so we represent each satellite by PRN number, like PRN1, PRN2, all the way to PRN32, for example. Okay, so now you know where it comes from, right? And uh, luckily, because this er uh, earlier last week, you also looked at pseudo-random integer, pseudo-random number in another class called Digital Communication Course. So it's all the same, okay? So this code, it's sometimes also called ranging code. Okay, range mean distance. Okay, there are two types of codes used in GPS. One is they call course acquisition codes or CA code. Course mean like a not so not so precise. This is what it means. Not so precise. Okay, and for the CA code, each code has one. 1023 chips okay and the frequency is at about one megahertz that we mentioned earlier okay and for this l1 frequency the lambda is at uh, 13 me 300 meters another code that is used is called precise codes or sometimes called encrypted codes 
with the abbreviation of PY. So sometimes people just call PY codes and they are used on L1 and L2 frequencies, okay? The uh, length of the, the length of the chips is 10 to the four chips or 10 to the four bits, okay? And the megahertz is 10.23 megahertz. The lambda is 30 meter lambda. Okay. I think 300 meters lambda is based on here. Okay. And of course the last part is navigation data, which is the 50 hertz data. One frame has 1,500 1, bits, which has five subframes, okay? And for each one, each frame or each five subframes, it requires 30 second transmission. And it, uh, the data consists of health status, ephemeris, clock bias, and so on, okay? So here are the uh, next page will show a more detailed pictures of these pictures, okay? So let's take a look. So this is the signal generation for CA code and PY. So what does it do? Well, so let's start from the base frequency, okay? We start from 10.23 megahertz, we divide it by 10. This is for CA code. After dividing, you get 1.023 megahertz, okay? And uh, what else? Uh, for the CA code generators, uh, well, this is the, data, the navigation data, okay? That has many frames. The frequency is at 50 bit per second, okay? So it will be added to the CA code. It will be added to the PY code, okay? And the PY code itself also enters this switch by itself as well, okay? So this CA code and data that we encode, that we do the spray spectrum, they are modulated by BPSK and uh, with the frequency, let's say L1, okay? And then we get the CA code or CA signals, okay? So that's one thing, one part. For the PY codes and uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the PY codes, okay? Uh, it goes to BPSK modulator at L2 frequencies and uh, and then sends out like this. Okay. For the PY codes that is uh, used to encode the data or do spread spectrum, okay, you will uh, send it to BPSK modulators together also with L1 and then add it to the CA codes, okay? So for L1, we transmit using PY codes, PY coded data, and also CA coded data, okay? This is for L1. For L2, it is based on PY only, okay? So that's the difference, okay? So PY, they enters at both frequency, both L1 and L2, okay? And uh, for CA codes, CA coded data, they just uh, based, they are, they are in the L1 only, okay? So these are the two different signal generation, okay? So here just uh, the, uh, comparison between PPS and SPS. For the PPS, based on PY, they reside on both frequency, L1 and L2. 
for their standard positioning service is based on CA code only and it's in L1. Okay. And that's why in most consumer devices, you don't need P2, or you don't need L2 frequency. You only need to have L, uh, L1 frequencies only. L2 is not for you to use. Okay. But of course, P2, you can use it. Uh, uh, you can use it to come up with the range type information and all that as well. Okay. But uh, it's more for like a more expensive type of uh, the receiver, like the one that we use in our lab. Okay. And what are the power that, you know, transmitted for these GPS signals? Very low. If you take a look, it's, it's below minus 150 decibel watt. Okay, so it's very, very low. Okay. But of course, after going through a few blocks at the receiver, it will result in higher SNR. Okay. So in this page, we just say uh, for L2, L2, you use the uh, data, multiply with the code, and then, and then transmit on frequency L2. This is data, this is code, PY codes, okay. For L1, we have the same data and then multiply with the CA code. Okay, don't forget CA code, the length is only, the length is only 1,023 bits, okay. Or chips, chips. But then PY codes, the length is 10 to the 14 bits or chips. So it's very, very long, you know, extremely long. I like one week long, something like that. But L1 frequency also consists of the data and also uh, PY code as well. Okay. Uh, when we receive the L1 frequencies, we extract only CA code because we don't even know the code for PY. Okay. So that's what happens. But for the military, they have the PY, so they can they can extract the data. Uh, we can receive P P two. We can receive L two frequencies. Okay, but we will not get the data from there. We only can compute the range because we receive the time. Okay. So that's the difference. So we can get. Uh, anything out of the CA code, but not, but nothing out of the PY. Okay. And also, what else? Yeah. So these are the comparison. You can take a look. No, the difference between this uh, precise positioning service and also standard positioning service in terms of numbers. Okay. Uh, for receiver, uh, the receiving system consists of antenna, receiver front end, and also processing. Okay. For uh, we can continue next time. It's already six forty-five. No. So for uh, for receiving purpose, you use antenna for signal reception for different constellation. Okay. For the RF front end, this is for the analog processing. You do filtering, you convert to lower frequency from L1 or L2, you convert to lower frequency. Then you do sampling or A to D and you do quantization to make it like digital, okay? And then from there for processing, we do signal processing which includes correlation, acquisition, and tracking. We'll talk more next time, okay? Then once you, do, once, once, once you acquire signal, meaning that you acquire the right frequency, we need to acquire the right frequency because of the Doppler system. You need to track the code, or you need to track frequency as well, and you also need to track the code or code phase to see where the code starts so you can get our data. Okay, then you demodulate to get the data, navigation data. Okay, you can then you can compute pseudo range, 
then you can compute positioning, then you can measure performance, and so on. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I think we will end here. We don't finish the whole slide. It's okay. We'll continue next time. So next time we will talk about these three steps. I think there are about 20 slides. Okay. And uh, it's a bit slower than normal. So uh, be patient with me. Normally I talk about these slides for three hours, but I think uh, evening time is just too uh, horrendous to have three hour lectures. So uh, we can go slow, but we can do it every week. Okay. If we have time, we can add in the extra lecture in between. Maybe that helps as well. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay. So any question with you? Yes. Yes, please. Ask. In, in DOP. Yes. In what, what page? Uh, oh, let me uh, wait, wait. Let me uh, stop the recording. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's okay.